Hey, Battle Bill here with another video, getting into some more Season 8 Great League Go Battle League Battles. And for this video, we have a nice little shoutcast. It's been a while, but Battle Bill's back on that content grind. So please send me your battles, because I will be shoutcasting them, and I really want to focus on some of the new stuff that, again, was updated in Season 8. So shout out to the homie 316 Trainer X. He's a Twitch streamer, a fellow content creator. I'm going to throw the link to his Twitch channel in the description of this video, because he went through the effort to get me some Dragon Tail Lugia battles. So Dragon Tail was buffed, it does more damage now. With the uh, Season 8 update, it generates energy a little bit less. It's very similar to like a Dragon type Smackdown. But not only is this Dragon Tail Lugia, but he has the legacy move of Arrow Blast on it. So please go show him some love on his Twitch stream. And also, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on this video because of the fact that we're getting you this content. Let's see how updated buffed Lugia performs in some Great League Go Battle League battles. We have about nine battles also, and they're sped up because it's a shoutcast, more battles, like I promised, and a little bit more on the speed. So let's see how my commentating skills have declined in the amount of time since I've last shoutcasted some battles. So we had a positive lead there. They safe swapped into Medicham. So he brings in Lugia. We can already see Dragon Tail chunking away at the Medicham. The Medicham's going for a charge move. I'd expect an ice punch. They go for a power up punch. So that was a big call. But honestly, even if it was an ice punch and it would be super effective, Lugia is quite tanky in every league that it performs in. So he's just going to get to that sky attack, land it, going to go for the Dragon Tail farm down. The charge move is coming through. It's powered up what's it gonna be it's a psychic shields it it is a buff psychic oh and they got the defense debuff but i don't know if really shielding the psychic there was the play just because of the fact that lugia resists it and lugia is tanky plus that nine tails is gonna come in but he does have a nice charge move another sky attack to deal to the alola nine tails now it is a charm alola nine tails so it's really huge that he kept switch because on this team comp he's running galarian sunfisk lead with chestnut also and you do not want charm lined up with a chestnut so he swaps into the Galarian Sunfisk. They then swap into their Politoed. He did not want to get farmed down. And he's sitting in a pretty solid spot here because of the fact that Chestnut can line up with this Politoed. And the um and the Alola Nine Tails is pretty much almost dead. So the opponent can spam the weather balls, they're gonna do a nice chunk of damage, but I think Chestnut can handle this. And even if they can't, Lucas has a little bit of health left. We shall see. Let's see what happens here. He decides not to shield the weather ball. Comes through. Takes out the uh, stun fist. He comes in with the chestnut. Does have to worry a little bit about a blizzard coming through from the polytoad. So he goes for the energy ball immediately. This will either take out the polytoad's remaining health or get his opponent's final shield. It gets the shield. They're gone for a charge move. How worried about a blizzard is he? He decided the shield. He decided the shield. It ended up unfortunately being a resisted earthquake. But the opponent swaps into their loot, their Alola Nine Tails, and he goes into his Lugia to catch the Weather Ball coming through. And that was a huge play there because Chestnut does not want to take that Weather Ball damage. He's able to Vine Whip down. The Politoed comes back in. It doesn't have Blizzard. This is an easy clap for match number one. Gonna Energy Ball the Politoed and take the first match of this set of battles. Really well played, a lot of back and forth, just the types of battles that you love to see. And honestly, Lugia has a good chance at farming down Pokemon now with that Dragon Tail buff. He didn't unfortunately get to an Arrow Blast there, but was able to handle that Metacham really well. And that's a big matchup in Great League PvP battles. Getting into match number two, we have a Stunfisk on Stunfisk matchup. And this is probably one of the worst mirrors to play out because if you fall for a bait, it sucks. If you bait and it doesn't get shielded, it sucks. You gotta land these earthquakes. So 316 is just going straight earthquake. Can't blame him there. Hopefully, because that was a CMP tie, his opponent's also going straight earthquake. They are not. He gets baited. Very unfortunate. How is he going to be able to pivot from this situation? That becomes the question. And he pulls a swap to catch a potential earthquake. What a play! 
catches the double resistant earthquake and then they swap in Altaria because they don't realize that Lugia has Dragon Tail which you can see it's super effective chunking away. He gets to a sky attack here, puts the Altaria in the yellow and that's what's huge about running these new Pokemon, these updated Pokemon because people don't realize the movesets on it. Swapping into Altaria here was not the play because he should be able to Dragon Tail down before getting Dragon Breath down and he's just able to pull that off. Lugia holds on because of its tankiness he's at another sky attack and the opponent probably comes back in with the g fist so he's gonna mm, he might have been able to get to an arrow blast there that, that, that's a hard call there because obviously lukey is almost dead and you just want to get off your um charge move but because of the mud shots that were going to be double resisted could have definitely got to an arrow blast in that specific situation swaps into g fist goes straight for the earthquake again gets the opponent's last shield they were low on energy because they threw an Earthquake to get to zero. So they should be at another Earthquake now. And he calls it correct this time. They swap into a Jellicent. And he's sitting in another positive situation, making really good plays. Their Jellicent does have Bubble, which is super effective. But Chestnut is in the back. And Chestnut is a Grass type. That could deal super effective damage when the Jellicent does take out this Galarian Sunfist. This is going to be a Bubble Beam, though. Which is actually better for him here because that just goes to prove that the Jellicent doesn't have Ice Beam. So Chestnut can pretty safely come in here, farm all the way down, take a Shadow Ball to the face, or can get Bubble Beamed and then swap into Lugia to um, clear the debuff. But they go for the Shadow Ball, should be able to Vine Whip down without any issue. Bubble takes a little bit longer to charge up than Hex does, and now the Stun Fist has to come in. Take this energy ball to the face. Could away a superpower. Doesn't really matter. Both are going to take out the remaining health and do a really good job in match number two. What are these plays we're witnessing? Really well done with 316 in these first couple battles. I'm excited for the next one. So now it's looking like Dragon Tail is really solid on Lugia now. It doesn't really look like you need the legacy of Arrow Blast. The legacy move of Arrow Blast, but you know, we'll see. Maybe I stand corrected. He's playing out a Galarian Sunfist on Galvantula matchup here. Shielding the first move. I don't know if I would shield anything against um, Galvantula when I'm running a Galarian Sunfish, just because everything's uh, at minimum single resisted. They swap into Galarian Sunfist. He comes in with his. Chestnut here. They throw a resisted earthquake, but then again, both moves from Stunfisk are resisted by Chestnut because of the uh, fighting and grass typing. And now we're just going to see this matchup continue to play out. He's safely going for the energy balls, which is the best way to go about this just because you want to debuff yourself. Does end up shielding a rock slide here. So unfortunately, some. Shields on resistant moves, which aren't the most ideal, but can go for double superpowers here. They shouldn't be able to get to an earthquake. Even debuff the rock slide shouldn't take out the uh, chestnut. Let's see. I could be held corrected. This should just be a rock slide, right? It is just a rock slide. Chestnut does survive, even debuffed. Gonna get to another superpower here. But because he nerfed himself with the first superpower, the second one's not gonna do as much damage. And it almost takes out. The uh, Stun Fist there doesn't quite. And then they come in with an Azumarill, and he just falls short of the Energy Ball, which is extremely unfortunate for this matchup. Comes in with the Galarian Stun Fist, gonna go for the Earthquake. Good uh, play here, just because of the fact that the Azumarill most likely has Ice Beam, plus the Stun Fist has a bunch of energy. You don't want the Lugia to have to take all the, uh, all the Ice Beams to the face. You'd rather Clarion Sunfist take it and take the risk that the Azumarill doesn't have Hydro Pump because a lot of Azumarills aren't running Hydro Pump these days. So he gets to another Earthquake. This should take out the Azumarill's remaining health. And let's see how he decides to play it. The Clarion Sunfist comes back in. I'm not 100% why, 100% sure why he's looking to throw the Earthquakes. The earthquakes would be neutral because of Galvantula's Bug Typing along with its Electric Typing. So you definitely just want to go Rock Slide because of that being super effective. But he comes in with Lugia and Lugia, oof, was just tanky enough to get to a Sky Attack. But unfortunately, they pull a really good swap and catch a Sky Attack on the Galarian Sunfist. But... Does have Rock Slide, should survive this lunge, even debuff. They're definitely not at two here. Galarian Sunfist holds on, and he he's always still going for the Earthquake. Oh, 
It worked out, thankfully. That almost cost him the match. Definitely go Rock Slide there. Definitely go Rock Slide. Maybe Earthquake for the BM. I'm doing this Shoutcast live so you can see Twitch chat over there. So the trainer that I'm Shoutcasting is saying he's going for the bad banners, which I definitely respect because that's always funny to watch. Has a positive lead here with Galarian Sunfist on Altaria. Definitely don't want to go Earthquake here. They pull a really good swap into Cray Dilly. What a comp. Altaria and Cray Dilly. He's going to swap into his Chestnut to match a Cray Dilly. And that's a smart play because the, super, the Energy Balls should be neutral. Superpowers would be super effective. But honestly, really doesn't need to throw the uh, Superpowers here and debuff himself. Gets a shield. Energy Ball could potentially debuff their defense. It does not. Cray Dilly has what, Stone Edge, Grass Knot. So Chestnut's not too worried about anything in this matchup. That didn't really do any damage there. Going to build up to another Energy Ball. Another Charge Room's coming through. Definitely doesn't need to shield this either. Another Grass Knot. Doesn't even have to worry about the Bullet Seeds potentially, you know, farming him down. And if the opponent decides to shield here, he'll be up two shields and no shields. And honestly, can probably still take out the uh, Cray Dilly if um, they decided to shield there because he could have shielded a move and then thrown a superpower. Altaria comes in. Dragon Breath's down the Chestnut. He goes back into... His Glarian Sunfist, they swap immediately into Swampert, and he has all uh, his Lugia. And Lugia is sitting very pretty in this matchup. The Hydro Cannons will deal neutral damage, and they're quite spammy. But you can already see the Dragon Tails chunking away at the Swampert. And one Sky Attack should be enough to take it out once he does end up getting the shield. So Hydro Cannon comes through, you see it does about like 35-40% to 40 of Lugia's health. But look at how much damage Dragon Tail does. I'm really liking the damage increase on it, considering this is all neutral. Sky Attack guarantees a shield, and because of the Dragon Tail damage, another Sky Attack would take it out. Now he doesn't have to shield here, but it is a safe play because Stunfisk would not need a shield against the Altaria. Gets to the Sky Attack, this will take out the Swamper. And now he just has a full, fully healthy Galarian Sunfist to line up with his opponent's Altaria. On top of the fact that the Lugia has super effective Dragon Tails and almost didn't even need Stunfist to finish this off. But the Altaria is at a Sky Attack. This should take out the Lugia's remaining health. But now Stunfish just comes in and the opponent should top left. They're choosing not to. This would definitely be a situation to, uh, you know, bad manner with an Earthquake since they want to waste both of their times by continuing to play out this unnecessary matchup. And then going for this charge move here, which could be Sky Attack, Dragon Pulse, Moon Blast, Dazzling Gleam. You pick a new, you pick a move from Altaria, it's not doing anything. And uh, I guess they needed to throw the move to guarantee that, you know, Altaria wasn't throwing Focus Blast there. On to the next one. So, we've got Galarian Sunfist on a Skarmory lead, another positive lead. Definitely just want to throw the Rock Slides here. Another BM would be to throw the single resistant earthquake because Skarmory's steel typing along with that flying typing. But definitely don't want to BM when a match just starts and going to spam the rock slides. The opponent is staying in. I would expect a swap at some point. They're building up a bunch of energy. So I'm wondering what they're going to want to do here. Maybe Brave Bird and Dip. I don't know if that's really the play. I think Galarian Sunfist on Skarmory in the lead is just not a great matchup. If you're the Skarmory, you kind of just want to get out. You really can't do anything here. And you're setting yourself really far back. But he decides to shield. And unfortunately ends up being a Sky Attack. Was probably expecting a Brave Bird. But even the Brave Bird wasn't worth shielding. So an unfortunate use of a shield there. But another charge move comes through. Sky Attack again doesn't do much. Going to over farm. Going to be able to get off another Rock Slide. I'm still surprised they haven't swapped out of this matchup. This Rock Slide won't take out the Skarmory. It'll get it really low. I don't think he's going to be able to Mud Shot down. So he does need to be... Okay, he throws both of them back to back. I probably would have done maybe one or two more Mud Shots because they weren't going to get to a Brave Bird. But he was kind of getting into the health range. That would have been a little bit uncomfortable here. They come in with a Whiskash. Is it Battle Bills Double Mud Boy Squad? Skarmory and Whiskash? I would let this come through. Chestnut's going to be an easy answer for Whiskash. Do have to worry about the Blizzard from Whiskash. But because they threw the Mud Bomb so quickly... They definitely don't have too much residual energy. And then they come in with Altaria. And Lugia does really well against Altaria in this meta. It does so well with Dragon Tail. They go for a charge move. He shields the Sky Attack. These Dragon Tails are literally chunking away. So Lugia has a good matchup against Altaria. Has a good matchup against uh, Metacham. We saw it do well against Swampert. This Dragon Tail buff is, you know, pretty solid. 
So let's see how the remainder of this match plays out. Unfortunately, that shield in the beginning of the match might potentially come back to haunt him. But let's see if Luka can carry the load because it could definitely tank this, uh, these sky attacks. Now he goes for his next sky attack right away. I might have over farmed a little bit there just in case they decide not to shield, which they decided not to. Just because the whisk cash can't exactly come in and mud bomb you down. They're going to need to throw... Um, they're going to need to throw a blizzard here to take you out. They could mud bomb and try and mud shot down, but that's going to be very difficult with the dragon tail um, oppression and the sky attack damage. So they're going to go for the move here. Let's see what they decide to do. They do end up trying the mud bomb. He doesn't take out the Lugia. He swaps immediately, recognizing this, goes for the vine whip down, and it ends up being GG for this match. So that was what? Whisk cash? That was a Whiskash double flyer team. So it wasn't double Mud Boys. It's Altaria and Skarmory. Interesting. So we got Galarian Sunfisk on Pelipper for this next match. This is a bit of a tighter matchup, even though Pelipper's a flying type. It has access to Water Weather Ball, which is super effective. And as you can see there, does a really good chunk. And Pelipper wins CMP. So honestly, if anything, Pelipper is a, uh, a negative lead for this Galarian Sunfisk. And they decided not to shield. And also, Chestnut... Ooh, and they pulled the swap there. Chestnut doesn't exactly do too hot against Pelipper 2 because the wing attack quick move from... Um, from Pelipper. There we go. I can figure out what I'm trying to talk about. It's going to deal super effective uh, damage against the Chestnut. And now he's brought in his Chestnut against his Defense Deoxys. Landed an Energy Ball, which is pretty huge. Honestly, I don't know if I would have shielded here. But this should be a Psycho... Oh, they don't have Psycho Boost? Questionable. Definitely didn't want to show the Rock Slide. I would have expected Psycho Boost. Honestly, I probably would just let Chestnut go down and then farm with Lugia. But this still works out. So Pelipper's going to come back in. This shouldn't be enough energy for a Hurricane. Should just be another Weather Ball, which isn't going to take out. Hopefully, he can get this Energy Ball before getting Wing Attack down. This will deal neutral damage against Pelipper. Will it get a Shield? It will not. It puts the Pelipper in the yellow. So that's solid. Now the question is, what is the play here? He goes back into Stunfisk. Honestly, I'd probably just let Stunfisk go down here and then try and farm down with Lugia and see whatever they have in the back can hopefully beat it. So that's what he decided to do. Comes in with Lugia, is dragon tailing a bunch. Just can't quite dragon tail all the way down before the Pelipper is able to get to another weather ball here. But Lugia is able to tank it. But unfortunately, there's a Galarian Sunfisk in the back. So he really just loses this one off alignment. Some slight misplays, nothing major. Really just didn't have a good matchup with Galarian Sunfisk on Pelipper lead. Defense Deoxys on uh, Chestnut. And then now Lugia on Galarian Sunfisk. But I guess in my mind... Ooh, he threw the Arrow Blast. First time we're seeing the Arrow Blast. So what this is proving is two things. Lugia with Dragon Tail. Definitely legit in some Great League battles. I think it's also kind of showing you really don't need the Legacy move if you don't want to use an Elite TM. Because getting a Lugia with Arrow Blast underneath 1500 CP isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. So you might be better off with Hydro Pump, especially in this situation. Actually, Hydro Pump might have came in clutch here. Now that I think about it. So maybe you're better off without it. So just an interesting thought to hold on to. Getting into the next match, Galarian Sunfist on a Talonflame lead. This is a very uncomfortable matchup to play out just because like, you can deal this Rock Slide damage, which is double super effective, but it doesn't one-shot the Talonflame, and then they deal super effective damage against you. But they decide they don't want to play it out. They swap in the Politoed, and he's got a Chestnut to pretty much wall it. Well, this is a Blizzard. That was pretty quick, though. I don't know if I'd shield. He doesn't shield. A great call on his end. The one concern here is that he takes out the Politoed, even though he has a shield advantage. Well, they shielded. Why? But the Talonflame could just came in and chunked and farmed all the way down. I probably wouldn't shield here either. But let's see what he decides to do. He decides not to. That's fine. I would do exactly what he's doing right now. So, gonna, and it's Bubble Politoed. I didn't even realize that until somebody in my chat pointed it out. I would be slightly concerned about another Blizzard, but he made a huge call there. Great call on his end. Gonna Dragon Tail all the way down. And Lugia with two shields. We know one of the Pokemon is Talonflame, so we're not too worried about that. And again, another matchup where we wish we had Hydro Bomb. Hopefully, now that the Stunfist stayed in, 
he's able to get to the earthquake they don't potentially uh catch it on talent flame because that would be very unfortunate but they do see mp tie here the opponent seems to be a lot more afraid of the stun fist with their talent flame than they probably should be they probably should have played out the lead but not everybody knows the exact matchups on how they want to uh take care of things especially if they're potentially trying out a new pokemon for the first time so now he decides the shields here i probably wouldn't have done that this rock slide will hurt so maybe that's why he decided to do it but i just would have felt safer with lugia anyway but the rock slide takes out its remaining health so you know what i'm just wrong about that one i take that back rock slide definitely the play there but hydro pump on lugia would have made that a little bit more comfortable and lugia would have put an extra work there so I'm starting to get a little uh, sold on not really needing Arrow Blast, but I definitely appreciate 316 for submitting these battles and using Arrow Blast for our entertainment. So again, just I don't even know, I, I'm not sure if you use an Elite TM on it or not, or if he was able to trade for 100 1500. I don't think that's possible. Maybe you can tell me in chat. But either way, I do appreciate the heck out of him for going through the effort of using this specific Lugia for us to watch. So, you know. Check out his Twitch for more battles like that. On top of the fact that, um, I just missed the boom because I was getting on this whole side tangent. But, um, I would definitely check out his content. And, of course, you know, drop the like, comment, and subscribe here to get more of these types of battles. Because I've got amazing PvPers that send in their content here to be shoutcasted, which is amazing. So, right now, I ended up on a whole tangent. Apparently, I missed something and I can't rewind. And he's got Chestnut on Cresselia here. Takes a Moonblast. The Chestnut survives. Gets to another energy ball, which is relatively clutch. Now, I'm not sure what the right play is here, because I'm not even sure how this matchup ended up playing out. But he decides to come in with the Galarian Sunfisk here. This does feel relatively comfortable, because of the fact that Galarian Sunfisk only takes neutral from the Grass Knots that Crest is going to throw. And now he's going to build all the way up to the Earthquake, because Rock Slide will not take out the remaining health of this Crest. And do we know what the third Pokemon is? We're not sure. But also, 316 did just let me know in chat that he traded for it, and Elite TM did. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, maybe he deserves a follow on his Switch channel. But anyhow, their last Pokemon is Politoed. They're going to throw Weather Ball here. I would not shield it. I would count on Lugia. Oh, he stayed in. Ooh, that was, oh, that was, that was stressful. That was stressful. Just gets this rock slide in time and gets a huge shield. Ooh, slight misplay by the opponent shielding that. Definitely a huge call on his end for um for being able to get to that rock slide in time. And then comes in with the Lugia here. Gonna be able to drag and tail enough. This opponent definitely doesn't seem to be running Blizzard on their Polytoad because their moves are coming through so quickly. And he sh could get for, get to an Arrow Blast here. But I don't really think he needs Arrow Blast here. I think between the Dragon Tails and the Sky Attack, this is plenty. But it will be really satisfying to watch this Arrow Blast come through and take out the Politoad's remaining health. So this is a GG for another match. And notice again, a lot of wins here. And Lugia's committing, or contributing, not committing, contributing a bunch to these dubs. Not specifically in this match, but you know, in, in general, in the collection of matches. Going for the little BM and did, oh, that's what the boom was. He EQ'd a Nido Queen. Yeah, the Nido Queen had to take that L in the beginning though. Nido Queen, even though it gets Earth Power, doesn't have an amazing matchup against... Uh, Galarian Sunfisk is poison triple resisted. Now, unfortunately, loses lead here to Obstagoon lead. Safe swaps in the chest now. We see a Charmer come in. And people are really still running Obstagoon double charm. That was a great play on the superpower. He got to another one? Debuffed? Talk about amazing energy management. Gets the shield. Does he have a chance here after losing lead and swap like that? Almost definitely comes in with Galarian Stunfisk here. Gonna mud shot all the way down. Doesn't need to shield anything coming from the Wigglytuff because of the fact that it'll be Ice Beam or Play Rough. Ice Beam, because Ice Beam's neutral Play Rough is resisted, so you definitely just want to go Ice Beam. But it's still not threatening. And now the Obstagoon comes in, but Galarian Stunfisk has a bunch of energy now. So it looks like he's just deciding to swap once the Stunfisk comes in. Let's see what ends up happening. Do they have another Charmer? Of course they have another Charmer. But Lugia's pretty tanky, so even though the Dragon Tails are resisted, he's still and double resisted because of the fairy typing, he's still getting to these sky attacks, threatening damage against the Alolan Nine Tails. Unfortunately, again, these Dragon Tails aren't doing much. Probably doesn't shield here. Let's see what he decides to do. He does decide the shield. Okay. Okay. He'll get to another sky attack. It'll either force the uh 
shield of the Alolan Ninetales, or it'll take out the Alolan Ninetales. I feel like it forces a shield, and then they commit to a charm down, but let's see what they decide to do. They decided not to shield. They come in with the Obstagoon. They can't exactly counter down. They need to throw this Night Slash, which gets the, which gets the energy. I don't see him shielding... Well, he shielded that. Never mind. <laughs> I don't see him shielding this, or that, or this, or that. But he decided to shield, and he's gonna get off another Sky Attack for his effort, efforts. I feel like I put the letter R in the word Sky Attack. My shout casting is a little rusty. And... Is that a CMP tie? That had to be turn differential. There's no way Lugia wins CMP against Obstagoon. Either way, that works out nicely because of the fact that the Obstagoon has no energy now. He's going straight for the Earthquake. This will take out the Goon's remaining health if it doesn't already get a shield. Has a bunch of energy. Gonna throw the Rock Slide. Honestly, probably should have went straight Rock Slide to begin with, but maybe wasn't sure of the Goon's health and wanted to play it safe. And the Rock Slide does take out the Goon's remaining health to clinch a dub where he lost lead, lost swap, and Lugia came in clutch and he used some shields that I wouldn't have expected and definitely proved me wrong. Played it really well. Shout out to him for those high level plays to recognize the situation. Has another poor lead, Chestnut, Ungolarian, Stunfist, safe swaps, runs into another poor uh, safe swap situation. Has a bunch of energy, so probably shields this. Yep, it's going to be an avalanche. Definitely wants to get off the uh, energy that he has. He's throwing the singular resisted uh, superpower, which you might have probably preferred to want to throw the energy ball just because it would have been neutral. And then I think this is going to set him up to get Powder Snowed all the way down because he's double uh, he's double nerfed at this point. And yeah. The f oh, he does get... No, what? He was there. It wasn't going to take out the Frost Last. And they might not have shielded, but he was there at that move. But some un unfortunate situation for this part of the match. Going to go into Galarian Sunfist, throw a Rock Slide. Honestly, even if he goes straight Energy Ball there... I don't think it allows him to pull out this match. But let's see how he decides to play it from here. They're going to throw an Avalanche on their Frost Slash. I am a little worried that they are going to outpace him. And they don't. Seem to be a tiny bit of visual lag. Is going to finally be able to take out the Frost Slash. But they still have the Chestnut. And we don't know what their final Pokemon is. He's staying in here. Not the best timing on the swap. I probably would have swapped immediately, but it doesn't. Ah! Oh no. He's going for. Oh no. <laughs> he wanted to go for the Arrow Blast, but then decided to go for the Sky Attack last second. Gets Lunge, which does neutral damage because of the Psychic and Flying typing that Lugia has. Throws the Sky Attack now. I'm curious. Oh, if it wasn't debuffed, he might have been able to pull this one out. If he. Inch. I'm just like in awe thinking about this. He would have gotten he would have gotten debuffed. Wait, he won this match. Wait, that chestnut's only 1431 CP. I'm so confused. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there, but it worked out. And that's a dub. Is that the final match of the set? I think that's the final match. But he pulled that one off. And I think that those were nine matches. That was really fast but oh sky attack was double super effective thank you blitz that explains it also probably didn't help that that um chestnut was at 1431 cp but definitely not the outcome i expected considering how that match was going along anyhow 316 my man thank you so much for the submission i'm getting back into the swing of things i had some weird pauses i gotta get you know back to my fluent shout casting skills so Give me some uh, time for my commentating, and hopefully we'll get back to normal. And I think I, I think for my first time back in a while, it came out pretty good. But those were some amazing battles. Again, I cannot stress this enough. I really appreciate him submitting it, and I really recommend you check out his Twitch. And check out my Twitch, too, while you're at it. We're shoutcasting these live. And a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the battles. Let me know what you thought of Lugia. And honestly, I think Lugia with the Dragon Tail buff has more play in Great League action than people are expecting. It's definitely one of the ones that kind of fell in, like, the, the, the background because of all the poison buffs. So, on that note, highly recommend you checking it out. And thank you all for watching. As always, I will see you all in the next video.